gonna get the reason that he is true. I'm about to that little flathead ass, smooth brain ass bitch. Give me a bitch with a frontal lobe. Mic check, <laughs> mic check. What's up? Checking the mic. I'm just saying, like, if 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 your intelligence was a physical attribute, mm -hmm. like ass and titties, ass, titties, and intelligence. Like, she ain't got no titties, but man, she one got more intelligence time. One more time. going all I'm the way down her time. back. Do you see the the the? <laughs> do you see the dwarfing fin on this girl? I ain't shit, but I ain't trying to be either. Pam told me I was a good person. That's more than she's ever said about you fucks. <laughs> you fucks. That's a, that'd be a good porn site. Yeah. You fucks. Mm hmm Like ghetto ass porn. You would think there'd be more. I know. I don't like how when you search for black porn, like you have to specifically search for black porn, and a bunch of white people still come up. Yeah. I don't get that. I don't know. Ebony? I'm glad we're not publicly referred to as Ebony people. <laughs> yeah, it's only in porn. Only in Ebony. porn. Ebony oh. porn. Yeah. It must have been like a famous black porn star named Ebony. No one says the Ebony community. Right. Yeah. Maybe they. Maybe that's his code word white people use for black people. Mm. They secretly calling us Ebony. Let me tell you what these E's did today. Have you seen that one before? Rick James on the toilet. Hell no. Somebody brought a whole camera in the, in the bathroom. You can't the trust nobody. They didn't have camera phones. You can't trust nobody. That's exactly why that picture was taken, because people knew. 30 years from that date, people would look at that picture and be like, look at Rick James on the toilet. He, he a human. Proof, you know what I mean? Caught him on the toilet. Man, let's get this pimp shit started then. You got the blunt put away? Play me some pimping, man. Play me some pimping, man. Rob Hayes. It's been a while. It's been a while. What's been up, man? Whole lot, man. Whole lot? Mm-hmm. Bet that up. The world shut down right now, man. The world shut down. Yeah, but we, we just still gonna turn it up. They shut down the world, we still gotta turn it up. Still gotta turn it up. That's why this shit right here is so important, man. Let me read you some of the shit that's been left in our comment section. Let's read some fucking comments. <laughs> Let's read some fucking comments. I'm about to read the fucking comments. I'm not gonna tell you who said what. Okay. I'm just gonna let you know we know who was said, and I got their name just in case. All right. I disagree with what they said. Somebody said it's a dude. Somebody said Chico's hair is about the most inspirational thing I've seen this year. Facts. Yeah. Another person said the girl in the cut. I'm assuming it's Taylor. The girl in the cut expression and body language is a whole mood. That's what was said. Oh my God, this one's kind of dark. Shout out to Demetrius Edwards though. He says, since the murder of my mom last year in October, I was in a deep dark place, but you brothers kept me from suicide and I stay watching the show faithfully just to keep my mind at ease. Love you brother. Much love to my guy, Demetrius Edwards. Rest in peace to mom. Somebody else said, 85 South Show be making more hits by accident than most of your favorite artists do on purpose. What's good, 85 percenters? You know what his name is? Gotta tell you. 
the scallywag whisperer. This from the Young Dro episode. It said Dro got them black forces on like he about to go do some dirt after the taping. <laughs> Motherfucking right. My nigga Juju B says, so we just gonna ignore the fact that that coffee table hard as fuck? I wanna get one. Go on Instagram and look up Runaway Ports and you can get you one. This shit is, this shit is nice as fuck. What you think about it, Rob? I mean, I've, I've been watching online and I didn't even know it had like gator skin on the inside. Don't tell them about the pimp shit. I'm sorry. But the interior is pretty, you know, pretty dope. Pretty dope. It's got speakers. Mally Maul says, no, I guess it's Molly Maul. One man's trash is another man's garbage. Carlos Miller, 2020. Well, that's a quote of a quote that comes from a great man that I have great respect for. My man, Jack Thriller. He said that. So every time you quote me, just know that you quoting him. But that's one of the mottos that I live my life off. You know, K-Dub got another one too. Like K-Dub always say, know what you fucking with before you fuck with it. One man's trash is another man's garbage. These are just some of the truths that I found true in my life. Oh. D so smooth said, look how Marvin Gaye is concerned about what happened to Nate Robinson. First of all, <laughs> first of all, I will not be speaking on what happened to Nate Robinson because I think that it's a pure example of racism. Uh. What fucking, what's his name? Logan Paul? Jake Logan? Yeah. Jake Paul? Jake Paul, yeah. What he did to Nate Robinson was pure racism. <laughs> it makes sense. Yeah, that was racism, bro. Because, I mean, boxing's supposed to have weight classes. You're right. They were two totally different sizes. Yeah. And I think, you know, fucking Jake Logan was better. Better, you know, he was more, uh, he was more apt at boxing than my man. I, I was looking for the word, but he was, yeah, he was more apt. Mm -hmm. Let me use that one. <laughs> he was, more, in, he was in, more inclined, more skilled. Yeah. He spent more hours boxing than Nate. Um, okay, moving right along. Somebody said, ain't nothing better than an unexpected 85 South show upload on a Monday. You motherfucking right. Ain't nothing better than that. Ain't nothing better than that. Only thing that I can think of that would come close to that is already having one roll, a grilled cheese sandwich, and getting your dick up. Yeah, that's what the mood that I'm in today. I'm gonna really, I'm gonna go there. I'm going to speak on how I feel like grilled cheese is probably the most underrated sandwich in the mm. game. We'll get to that later. Damn. I ain't, nah, that one ain't, that was some, we should, nah, I don't know if we could even do this one. This one says, this podcast is for everybody who's still eating their Thanksgiving leftovers. Mm. Nah, that shit, that, you eating Thanksgiving leftovers at this point, your ass dead. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Tyler Graham said, this podcast is for all the people who heard J-O-N beat drop and say, oh, yeah, this one a hit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. A lot of people be in the comments like, why y'all don't let J-O-N talk? <laughs> Why ain't nobody told your ugly ass to be quiet, man? That nigga just don't say much. <laughs> he really don't have a lot to say. You got some shit you want to say? Fuck somebody else gonna remind you of your <laughs> album, bro. That's the type of shit I'm talking about. What's the name of the album? Uh, Friends for Sale. Uh, Friends for Sale. Yeah. A 32 track instrumental album. A 32 track? Yeah. Take some of the tracks off. You gave them too much? <laughs> I think that's two albums. Is it a double disc? Yeah, it would be a double disc. Uh, it's just a, it's an album of beats? Yes, instrumental. This one is an instrumental album. Uh, and then, uh, I'm you know what it'd be dope? If all the 85 percenters, we got to post the link to your album and then let them make songs to the shit and then they can send them in. And then we can pick one of the, we can pick like some of the dopest ones. What's the name of it? Friends for Sale? Friends for Sale. Spotify, Apple Music, all your streaming locations. Mm. And also drop my artist, Lucas, first single. You got an artist, nigga? When you get an artist? <laughs> <laughs> nigga, you gotta, we got to interview you. You got an artist. <laughs> Fuck, fuck that. It's not his turn. 
an artist, my nigga. What's his name? Leek Lucas. Leek Lucas. Yeah. He got a story to tell. That's what's up, man. You got a whole lot of music over there. If you just give him, you got a whole album, 32 tracks of just instrumentals. I want it. Send me the link. Can't believe you dropped the album and didn't have me on it. No, no. No, yeah, yeah. It's, it's out already. No, no, no. Right. Okay, bet. All right. I'll be forgetting about the other shit. Okay. Moving right along. 63% of all statistics are random numbers made up on the spot. Facts. I think the percentage is actually higher. Yeah. It's probably more around 77% of all statistics are just random numbers made up by random people on the spot. On oh God. I put a decimal in there. Ooh. You know? Make it more believable. Mm -hmm. 78.6. Okay. That could have just made it 79, though. It could have, but it's more specific. Right. Right. All right, somebody says, I'm a diehard blank, blank podcast fun, fan, but damn it, I just became an 85 percenter. I ain't switch on them, but I did hit the subscribe button. Listen, you can listen to more than one podcast. Jesus Christ. But I appreciate your loyalty to the whatever you was listening to before this. But I feel like 85 South Show is the perfect compliment to whatever you was already listening to. Like if you mm -hmm. was listening to like some murder mystery and you needed to like switch it up, you fuck with niggas like this. If you was listening to some other podcast with another person and you know they was doing a bunch of yelling about some, you know, some ignorant shit, you need to listen to this because we don't do it all that. You mm -hmm. feel me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so appreciate you subscribing. We're going to steal all the podcast fans in the world since you can only listen to one. At a time. That's, that's more of a statement. Yeah, young Dro really did wipe a bug on the couch. He really don't give a fuck. Not right there. It's on that side. You straight on this side. We already had it clean. Okay. Well, a lot of people think this is the same couch over and over, but we actually rotate. We got a few of couches that look just like that. That's dope, ain't it? Yeah, that's dope. And then one day we will, but that shit sounds so believable. Sophisticated bad girl says she want to be an audience member. Okay. <laughs> Somebody said when J-O-N start laughing, he rocks side to side and throw his head back and look just like Stevie Wonder nephew. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I don't know if you made that beat on purpose, but every time, like I was just listening to it, and you know what I keep hearing on this? I give me some of that pussy, baby. I give me some of that pussy, girl. This is the remix. I'm up here in the trap. She keep on texting me. I told her if she wanna fuck, then send me them titties. Give me some of that pussy, baby. And give me some of that pussy, girl. I'll put this dick on your home girl, cause I don't have my own girl. Cause if y'all wanna have a threesome, gon' get naked and come on, girl. Some of that pussy, baby. Hey, give me some of that pussy, girl. That's the one. I'm taking that beat. I need that beat. We're going in the yo with that one. You fuck with it? Yeah. Rob Hayes on the remix. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I got some more shit to say. Those are all the comments. Shout out to all the 85 percenters leaving comments. One day we're going to do an episode. We're just going to read comments. A lot of shit going on in the world. Nate Robinson and goddamn Jake Logan. <laughs> just keep going about Jake Logan. Shout out to Jake Paul, Mike Tyson, Roy Jones. Mike Tyson won that goddamn fight. I don't give a fuck what nobody say. They wasn't supposed to have a win. Hey, no, nah, fuck that. Mike Tyson, they weren't, but they did. Also Mike Tyson was clearly in better shape. They, they also are two different sizes. Roy Jones wasn't a heavyweight. Hey, man, sometimes in a fight, you don't get to pick your opponent. That's true. You just true. gotta fight. Roy knew what he was doing when he walked in there. Mike hit him with two or three of them body shots, turned his goddamn <laughs> intestines into jello. That nigga wanted to hug the rest of them around. I, Mike was hitting for real. Woo! Yeah! That wasn't a dude that interviewed Boosie. That was a different, different Mike Tyson. Yeah, yeah. It's like the old Mike Tyson. Evander Holyfield said he want a rematch. 
Mike Tyson said, fuck it, because he didn't hear about it. Ah, <laughs> 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 uh, Mike Tyson didn't hear about it. <laughs> no, I'm just bullshit. Have you heard No Ceilings 3? I haven't, I haven't heard it yet. I'm just running through a t list of shit that has happened. Drake has a candle that smells like him. He been sending people candles. Who gives a shit? <laughs> who gives a shit? Oh, I, shit, shout out to, who gives a shit? Well, like, Gwyneth Paltrow had a candle that smelled like her vagina. Did and they sell out? Erica Badu had a candle that smelled like her vagina. I thought it was incense. Oh, she had incense, yeah, my fault. I know that motherfucker smell good, because I've seen a nigga on the internet eat a pack of them bitches. <laughs> <laughs> so I think she used her real pussy. <laughs> Speaking of pussy, Lisa Ray says Halle Berry is not good in bed. How she know? Because she says she can't keep a dude, so she might, she might have some bad pussy. I don't know. I mean, a nigga left Lisa Ray. Mm-hmm. Um, you can't really say shit. I ain't really heard nobody acting a fool about your pussy either. Except in the movie. I think men, we should have never put out in the world, like good pussy should have been just a secret. Like if women knew that we liked the pussy, they, like, they shouldn't know how much we like pussy. But since we always talking about good pussy, now they like, they in on the secret. That's what make them like hold the pussy and like make you work for it. It really ain't all that. I really ain't. I mean, at, I'm at the point in my life where pussy is like gushing. Like, I'm not going to eat it every day, but I do like to know that there's something in the house. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just want to have something sweet, but I'm not about to fucking eat candy every day. That makes sense. Yeah. You need balance. Man, pussy will keep a man so distracted. You'll never be great. You'll be good, but great. Just saying. Just gotta let that bitch just. Yeah, that was deep. Let that bitch simmer out. Mm -hmm. Speaking of good pussy though, shout out to Rihanna. <laughs> whatever she doing in life in the world, whatever she doing, she's going to fuck this. <laughs> I, wanted, I wanted to start an applause, I'm sorry. Whatever Rihanna got going on, that woman can do no wrong. You want to hear something ironic? LeBron James just signed a two-year extension for $85 million. $85 million! It's just, I like the 85. Mm-hmm. We got to send him a box of shit. Can he fit in in that shit? You got to register to vote. You going to vote for Raphael Warnock, the black dude? If I was here, I would. I like his commercials. Yeah. Black dude just making political commercials in a white neighborhood. Mm -hmm. and then he do some in the black neighborhood. His whole commercial is just like, he just play the clips of the white lady lying. And he be like, is this the bitch you want, Georgia? Yeah. <laughs> Raphael Warnock, fuck with your boy. I like the one where he walking the dog and then they're like, she voted no. She voted no. They have a lot of negative ads about me, but you know what I think of it? And then he throws the dog stuff away in the garbage. That's bullshit. That's dog shit. Come exactly. on. He don't say it, mm -hmm. but the commercials say he it. He implied it. Shout out to Monica. Just won a Lady of Soul Award. Yeah. Ooh, black women is killing it again. And uh, Miss Marseille Martin, right? That's how you pronounce that? Marseille, mm -hmm. Marseille Mount, uh, Martin secures the Guinness World Record for the youngest Hollywood executive producer. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> Tristan Thompson just became a U.S. citizen. Now I ain't can fuck these American hoes in peace. <laughs> Shout out to my nigga Tristan out there drawing these hoes, giving Chloe the business. <laughs> that nigga was gone before the baby started walking. Real nigga shit. Give a fuck how much money them hoes got. Cheat on them bitches. So what? Fuck them. Actually, I think Chloe is the one that liked this. Y'all sorry, Chloe. Niggas ain't shit. But you knew that before you started fucking with them. You said when your sister was fucking with them niggas, niggas wasn't shit. So you get what you asked for. <laughs> hmm. Free Casanova. 
this nigga facing two life sentences. Man. That's some shit I'm not turning myself in for. Two life sentences? Two life sentences. Come and get me. <laughs> <laughs> what my nigga finesse two times say, I never surrender. Real nigga dilemma. <laughs> <laughs> oh, life. shit. That's two life sentences. They about did them with the Rico. You think he did it? Who knows? We don't have don't enough know. information to draw a conclusion. Welcome back to the 85 South Show. <laughs> yes, indeed. It's your man Carlos Miller. I got my motherfucking LeBron's on because LeBron just signed for $85 million. You got damn right. It had to be, he reaching out to us via money. <laughs> out of all the amounts he could have signed for, not 80, not 79, not 96, 85. So cousin LeBron, big in my mind, LeBron, my cousin. Yeah. So my little cousin, though. Shout out to LeBron. I mean, I'm the oldest, so he got to be my little cousin. Right. Because, I mean, if he was my cousin, I would have had to do some big cousin shit. You know what I mean? Like, leave that nigga alone. Because I'm good big cousin. What's your big cousin skills like? My big cousin skills like? Your big cousin like? skills. Like, what's your little cousin say about you? Because that really defines you mm. as a person. If your little cousins don't fucking love and admire you, that means your soul fucked up. I don't know if they admire me. You don't think so? I, I don't know. I'm like I'm like the like annoying big cousin. That's fucked up. I thought you was a cool one. They'd be giving them like Yeezys and shit. Nah, not yet. Oh, you still wearing your shit, huh? I mean, I, 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 if we were the same size, I'd definitely give my cousin my. Hey, man, if you don't know who I'm sitting here with, man, this is my dog, Rob Hayes, man. One of the greatest, funniest. I don't like when people say up and coming. Yeah? Yeah, I don't like that. I just feel like you already are. Like, this nigga was already dope to me when I first saw him. I told him, I'm like, man, fuck this shit, you good. Then I look up, my man's got the blazer on, telling jokes on late night TV. I was like, I discovered this nigga. <laughs> <laughs> like, I didn't technically discover him, but I, like, I was around him early enough in his career where I knew he would be great. Like, I remember when they used to come to the show and work out, like, do the workout rooms and shit. If the shit went well, he would stay. <laughs> if he didn't like how the shit <laughs> went, that nigga would leave stage and go home. Mm-hmm. But he always came back, man. So that's my dog, Rob Hayes, man. Putting it down in the comedy world, bro. Glad you got to stop through the trap. Yes, sir. Have some refreshments and waters and shit like that. Mm -hmm. You know, just to talk some shit with your boy every now and then. It's the life source, man. Mm. Without water, would we be here? Nah, nah. Hell nah. Hell nah. How long could you think of a high question, though? Do you think sea turtles drink water, my nigga? Because they say, to me, to me, to me, for them to live in the ocean, they are extremely dry and ashy looking. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I feel like the way their mouths are shaped, it's almost like to block the water. When you think about it. You very rarely see motherfuckers who live in the water drinking water. Like, do fish drink water? No, they Like, what do fish parents tell fish children? They don't be like, you better drink that water. <laughs> I don't think they talk. I think they just follow. They just follow and they just so gotta you're learn to tell me on you their don't own. Think there's no fish equivalent to speaking. No, I think like you got an eye right here. You got an eye right here, so you should be able to see everything. And then you just, I see somebody right here. I see somebody right here. But do they call them somebody? They don't call them somebody. I don't know what they say mm. in their head. Mm. I never thought about fish thoughts before, though. Right. Like, this is new. I always think about shit like that, like octopuses. You think about octopuses? It's like, say you got one octopus, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, turtles do drink water. They gulp it while they swimming. So they kind of just, it's kind of just like, I guess it make the travel faster or something. <laughs> I figure like if you were swimming and you was drinking water at the same time. You got to push a bubble out. Exactly. That make more sense mm -hmm. than not. Yeah, like octopuses though. Like I like you got one octopus. Okay. But then it's two octopuses. But like, how many do you have to have before it turns into like octopi? 
Like if it was a group of octopus chilling, you wouldn't say, look yeah. at them octopuses. Nah. You would say, them niggas is over there being, they, look at them octopi. Like, octopi. Right, like is it like 15 octopuses is an octopi? But they'll never be 15 deep because they, they like to be by themselves. If they 15 deep, they might get tangled up. 15 is actually the most octopuses that they found in one place. They got an octopus community and it's 15 of them that live there. And they only keep it around 15 because they'll kick people out. Like you can get evicted from the octopus community. Hey, you get kicked out, that's... Just imagine though, you time. just chilling, you think everything all good, and then it's 14 angry octopuses outside like, bro, you gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> what y'all on, bro? What, what is it? They pointing at you, but like right. with all the tentacles And you know they pointing. angry because they all change colors to their angry color. Octopuses can change into any color or any surface. They got control over it? Yeah. Or they just, oh, I guess I'm this color now. Whatever they land on, like if you land on this table, they could be brown. They land on the couch, whatever the fuck color that couch is, they would change it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they land on your shit and be, and be green. <laughs> Not about to be fucking with my man Rob. No. Bro, you, that's, that, you look like you actually jogged in that jogging suit, dude. I hey, man. You actually used that for what it was that's for. That's what it's for. You actually jog in your jogging suit? I, I don't jog, but I'll, I'll go for a walk in a jogging suit. Nah. That defeat, that's, <laughs> and it's not a jogging suit, then. It's a walking suit. Would yeah, you use a yeah. walking stick? No, I don't use a walking stick. Uh, I feel like it's not a real walk if you don't have a stick, though. You got to find a walking stick, though. I, I'm not the type of person that just has a designated walking stick in the house. I feel like if it's a good walk, you will find a good walking stick on the walk. Yeah. And if like you, that's you, a turning point in the walk. Like once you find the stick, you halfway finished. Mm-hmm. Because you got to go through enough to be like, all right, I'm going to pick up this stick because I might need it. Right. You know? But if you, early in the walk, you see a big stick, you might be like, I don't need that. No, nah, I do. <laughs> Like if I, I would, if I found the big, like my walking stick first, like mm -hmm. before the walk actually started, then I know it'd be a good walk because I got the stick first. That, mm. that, that, that might be God saying, bro, here go a stick, go on a walk. You feel what I'm saying? And that's the only time you feel safe with a stick though. Like any other time in life, you would want more. But on a walk, you're like, a stick is cool. What do you use your walking stick for? I'm, I believe in myself, Okay. first of all. Just know that before I even pick the stick up. I ain't really got time, man. Let me go ahead and be clear, man. Check this out. If you looking for a good place, man, that have fresh food, deliver on time, and give back to the community, nigga, Hello Fresh <laughs> offer so many recipes to choose from each week to help you break out of your recipe route, including low, low calorie, vegetarian, and family friendly recipes every week. You know, cause I got a second baby. You dig? So I got to have somebody who going to bring the food fresh. I'm talking about on time, and it's already prepped up. So when I cut it out and put it on the stove, my, my, I mean, it take me about 15 minutes. Hey, man, anybody out there like saving money, you like discounts? Well, guess what? You can save up to 28% by using HelloFresh versus your grocery store shopping trip. HelloFresh offers fresh, high-quality ingredients every week for a super flavorful experience. So what I'm trying to tell you is, make sure you go to hellofresh.com slash 85south80, and you know what? I told you to get back. On your first meal at hellofresh.com, you know what we gonna do? We gonna take off $80. Yes, sir. So make sure you go to hellofresh.com slash 85south80, to get that discount. Don't worry about it. Don't trip. Cause HelloFresh be cutting out all the stress for meals, planning and grocery store trips, so you can enjoy cooking and get to the dinner, all right? So go on and get your cook on. Make sure you go to HelloFresh.com slash 85South80 to get $80 off your first, your first meal. And guess what? Included your free shipping. Oh no, we oh we gonna make sure it's free. Oh, yeah, we're going to make sure it's free, but you know what? Restrictions apply. So make sure you go to HelloFresh.com and figure it out. I'm so confident in my ability with the stick. Mm -hmm. So what I use the stick for, 
depends on what comes up. Okay. Like, say for instance, it's a nature walk. Mm -hmm. I come across some type of animal. Mm -hmm. I know how to hold the stick to let the animal know, hey, <laughs> I know how to use this stick. <laughs> <laughs> Don't fuck around. Yeah. Like, I respect you as an animal. But if you try me as a human with this stick, I'm on your ass. And I felt like if people saw me walking with this stick, they wouldn't be like, oh, he's a threat. They'd be like, okay, I'm safe. Somebody has a stick. Mm -hmm. You feel mm -hmm. like, that's how I be thinking though. Okay. Yeah. Because then, like, what if it was like, say you walking with a group of friends, right? Mm -hmm. Y'all come across the stick. How do you decide who gets to hold the walking stick? I think the person that notices it. You would think. You would think, but what if there's somebody in the group that's better with a stick? That you know, that's more, you know, they're more apt with the stick. They, you know, they they're, they're in the back of the pack. They're taller. They got broader shoulders. Their reach is longer, so the stick actually has, you know, duality. Then they gotta be assertive. They gotta be like, let me see that. Right. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Yeah, step up. Yeah. Step up to the plate. They got to step up because if you got the skills, right. go ahead and, you know. But have you ever had the stick stolen from you? Like, like snake, like repossessed, like, bro, let me see that. And, and then, then you notice, like, bro, we've been walking for a minute. You ain't trying to, <laughs> you ain't trying to get a stick back. And then, like, you, you think I'm a bitch? <laughs> That's what you're saying? Like, I'm not, I'm not capable? The worst is if they put it down and do something and they don't give it to you. Mm. Like they tie their shoes, they put the stick down, and then Ooh. they pick up the stick. Well, they still could have gave it to you. Damn. Especially if you find like a stick that won't break, like a. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's that one. Cause at first you gotta test it. Give me some stick music, bro. Fuck that shit. <laughs> These fuck niggas out here Come think on, it's man. a game, bro. Never get caught out here without your stick, man. Is that stick music? Let that ride. I like that. That's some hillbilly, motherfucking missing some side team type shit. <laughs> Slamming a truck door loud on a bitch. Some 92 AM Rebel Radio type shit. Hey. I'm about to get this show started, my boy. Look at this bitch. I got a motherfucking joint that's longer than your motherfucking index finger. I got a motherfucking joint. That bitch cold. For real, for real. Yeah. Tell the truth. I did that. Man, that's yeah. skills. That's skills right there. Look like a small baseball bat. That's what I'm, that's exactly what I was going for. You feel me? I even put the little, uh, I even just twist the little tip so I just you feel yeah. like, you know, twist somebody the tip, else. Twist make did. it look like a wick. Yeah, like somebody else did it. Yeah, I like that. You gotta have you some good stick music. Turn it down just a little bit, man, just so it doesn't become overbearing. You understand? Yeah. Just so it doesn't become overbearing, my dog. What's been going on in your world, man, since the pandemic hit? Man, since the pandemic hit, still been working. How? Uh, fortunate doing, enough man? to write, I wrote on the, uh, the ESPYs. They did For that real? from home. Mm -hmm. I knew you had some good shit going on. I just had to act like I ain't know. Rodan, uh, mm -hmm. second season of a uh, Sherman Showcase. Who is that? Talk, tell me about that. Uh, tell me about Sherman Showcase, Rob Hayes. It's not every day that we get people of your caliber through the trap. Hey, man, that's not true. Mm -hmm. I, I seen y'all. Y'all, I, I thought I was going to have to go through a lot of Try protocol to get, my, my to get here. Like, you know what I mean? Like, two nah, chains been nah, on this you couch, hit me. man. You hit me. Fabo been directly. on this couch, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, we don't call him Fabo no more. Two dollars. Two dollars. <laughs> I apologize. I apologize. Two dollars been on that couch, man. Two dollars been on this couch, man. Currency been on this couch. Tip, been on this couch. Tip. Rob Hayes, Ronnie Jordan, everybody on, who sits on this couch is a legend, bro. Obama on a book tour. I thought he was gonna be here today. I want him to come on this show, man. You gotta read the book. I don't think he gonna come yet, it's too early. I think if you read the book, he might come through. I don't know. I heard it's a long book, so you gotta get started. Is it, what's the book called? The Audacity of Hope 2? 
It's taking forever to light this bitch. I'm not sure the name of it. I'm it's a big picture of him on the cover, though. I know that. So I know I'm going to get the right one. I got this bitch rolled so tight. It's like a cigar. Hold on. The, the book is called A Promised Land. Barack Obama doing real estate now. <laughs> That's I, what I picked up from that. I'd buy real estate from an Obama. From Malia. Not, not Barack, though. Because I'm going to feel like he being disingenuous. Like, I know he don't need the money. But... If I did buy a house from Barack Obama, Michelle got to be at my closing. It's my only condition. That'd be hard. I know. Shit. Harder than lighting this joint. <laughs> it's there now, though. It's getting there. Christmas coming up. Thinking about having, you know, chestnuts roasting on an open fire. <laughs> For some reason, that just always made me think of fucking in front of a fireplace. What do you put chestnuts in? I mean, what other time of year will you even be using chestnuts? You don't fucking use those in August. I'm saying, well, how do you- Chestnuts even good. How do you roast chestnuts? Pam, you a baker. Are chestnuts good, my nigga? Do you eat them or is it just for but the smell? I don't eat nothing fucking chestnuts, man. <laughs> fucking try me like that, bro, <laughs> baby. Fucking killer, man. I meant you as in like do people. Do you, like not you. Do you? I've never ate a chestnut. Hey nah, man. Me either. I, I wasn't exposed to chestnuts. Mmm. Mmm. Nat King Cole probably had a chestnut. Though. Marvin Gaye probably had some. Yeah. He looking like he ain't no motherfucking chestnut. <laughs> <laughs> that that expression literally fits everything, bro. Did you know that we couldn't even get that fucking picture cleared so we could have used it on the BET Awards? We had to find what? an alternate Marvin Gaye picture. I noticed there was a different Marvin Gaye picture. Bruh, apparently this picture is too famous now. And Man. we got to find the original artist to see if it's okay. Man, his name is on the, on the painting. Somebody's what the fuck is wrong with you, uh, Ryan? This motherfucker comes back with all the shit people eat chestnuts in. <laughs> chestnut pasta, chestnut soup, chestnut puree, and chestnut cake. Get your ass out of here. <laughs> back to what we were saying about this Marvin Gaye shit, though, man. We couldn't even clear that picture. That's crazy. But we cleared the other one. We cleared the other one. I was like, this is BET. Y'all can't clear fucking Marvin. But it was at a, it was at a similar angle. It was like a similar, like, it was interesting. Yeah, that's that one right there, though. Yeah, finally got that bitch lit. Higher than a bitch with a third tit, like a witch. <laughs> ain't none of the staff here, man. I'm the only one on staff today, man. You didn't man, even get to turn up with the game. I know, man. It's still the same, though. You can still feel the vibes of the, you know, Christmas past in this bitch. This is one of my favorite pictures from my live show, man. I don't know who mama that is, but that lady beside her looks so proud of her. She looks so happy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Look at the dude behind her. He look like one of the original hot boys. <laughs> 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 He got like a camo beanie on, a chain on. Hell yeah. Real nigga yeah. shit. We got the best fans, bro. <laughs> Ain't nobody fucking with the 85%ers. I've okay. seen other people's fans, and I know for a fact that our fans are better than them. Come on, man. And they not the same fans. I'm one of them. I'm, I'm an 85%er. From the first percent. Christmas 2015. You know what I mean? I listened to it that day. I didn't know, man. I hit you, and then I came I was on like the third episode. But that's what, I didn't know that you stayed fucking with it like that. I didn't the know you whole were, time. I didn't know you were a percenter, man. The whole time. 
I remember Chico came through. He was like, I, I was already on the podcast. Mm. This is my podcast. Mm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I remember that. Sabado Domingo, I remember mm. that. Come on, man. Come on, man. I, yo. That's what people don't understand, though. We got a rotating staff. Come on. Anybody you've seen in the staff position, still in position. They didn't even see me, though. I was in audio. Mm. They only heard me mm. and seen still pictures. Ooh. But so, people was choosing. It was a good picture. A girl told me, like, you should make that your profile picture. Did you? I did. That was my avatar. Wow. In the studio, before the trap house. Before the trap. Then y'all went on the road and back to the trap house. Mm. The trap just been jumping, though. Come on, man. Yeah, we trapping abundance. The auto-tune machine, loose lace, J-O-N, the band. I'll, I'll watch them all. Come on, man. Come on, man. I'm humble. I'm humble. I'm a fan, man. I'm humble, bro. I'm, 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 I'm here I'm like, Hayes, this man. looks bigger on the TV. Like, that's... Like, I'm, I'm really, like... It looks like, bigger? I'm saying, I'm... You know how people say that when they're on a set? They're like, yeah. you know, it looks bigger on TV. My That's how I goal feel right now. was to just have a set so people could be like, we on set. Now we on set. We on set, yeah. man. Yeah. And that's the one thing about being on set. It's never as big as you actually think it is. Mm -hmm. No matter what the set is. No matter what the set is. I watch y'all on TV now. I bought my first TV this year. Shut the fuck up. That's I big gangster shit. Well, <laughs> first flat screen. Mm. I had some fat backs, but my first flat screen TV. That's how I know you get successful. Did you get a big one? I got a big one. Word. 65. Come on, man. What and we I, look like? I put y'all on there every every Saturday. I can't Word. do it so right So you're a Saturday Friday. watcher? I'm a Saturday watcher now. Okay. Like, I, I was a, like, Friday, you know, come on, man, what, what's up with the episode? Like, right. where's that guy? Right. You know what I mean? Right. But then... I started getting too busy on Fridays. Right. But then Saturday, clean the house, right. play some old school music. Right. After that, right. watch y'all. But then see, football. this is what I was just discussing, though. This shit hits so different on a Saturday. It hits different on a Saturday. Right. I noticed, like, when Joe dropped the show, if he dropped the show early in the day, like Friday morning, mm -hmm. that shit hit different. Mm -hmm. And then they have motherfuckers talking shit all day. <laughs> and then, like, if you drop it early, they will come back and watch it that night. And then, like you said, we got our Saturday crowd mm -hmm. that show up early Saturday morning. Roll up. I'm talking about people who have to be up at 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Then when they get up and get to fucking around, this the shit that they fuck with when they can't talk to nobody. Mm. Truck drivers, all types of motherfuckers who work in the warehouse. Mm -hmm. A shout out to everybody who work at the Amazon <laughs> warehouse. The we getting burned in the oh. Amazon warehouse, Rob Hayes. They didn't know they were gonna have a high pressure job when they <laughs> applied, you know? Yeah. Like if you applied before the pandemic, you didn't know, oh, this is gonna be people's livelihood. Right. You was just like, I'm gonna fold the box and nah. put the tape, close the box. Sense of urgency went right up. Come on, man. Essential worker now. Yeah. Right. Now they're the last line of defense. Wow. Wow. They like the men in black. Hey, I'm telling you, man. It's it's been a it's been a you know a challenge just to keep paper towels and, and, and toilet paper for some people. And you know, Amazon been holding it down. They've been holding it down. They don't knock on the door or nothing. You don't even know they came. They you just text you a picture. Came. Your shit outside. Been out there earlier. Mm-hmm. We fucked with them. I thought we had a lot of people, like a lot of fans at like the Atlanta airport. I think probably 89.3% of people who work at the airport fuck with this show. I believe that. Yeah. I used to work at the airport. You did? Mm -hmm. What was you doing? I worked at Chick-fil-A. Mm. <laughs> yeah. You ever fuck with any of them chicks that work at the Popeyes down there? No, no, I didn't. Some real talent at the but Popeyes. Only <laughs> I'm Only talking about some I was in fat booties, man. Some fat booties at that Popeye's. When well, you got like chicken grease all in your They got everything. chicken grease. I didn't even think like that. I was just ready to like get out of there. Telling you, big booties hit different at the airport, man. I don't know if you know this, but like you see a chick with a big booty, it's like a little bit fatter because she at the airport. Lil John came to our uh, Chick-fil-A one day. Mm. This was in 07. We was we was hype. That you was, know what that I'm meant saying? something. That was early yeah. morning. Early morning, yeah. got a chicken biscuit. You know, somebody's like, are you Lil John? 
Yeah. Why would you ask Lil John that? <laughs> like they didn't know what the, to say. All the people. They didn't know what to say. That are easily identifiable. <laughs> You ask Lil John. I didn't ask him. That was the type of motherfucker that'd walk up to Shaq and I'll be like, watch his you answer. Shaq? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking asshole. Like, that's the type of shit that make people mad early in the morning. Am I Lil John? Bitch, do I look like Yes, get my fucking chicken biscuit. I ran up on Kanye in the airport. Mm. As only I know you would. <laughs> because the, people don't know this. Rob Hayes is probably the biggest Kanye West fan. And turn the music off. We, we don't need no music. Kanye would think it's disrespectful to have music playing while bringing up Kanye. Let's talk about that, because you have a podcast also. I have, well, it's, it's in and out. Nah, but see, as long as you own it, you have it. That's true. Yeah, so tell me about it. Yeah, no, your, your, I had a podcast. Your Kanye fandom. All about Kanye West, and basically we would talk about, like, different songs, We'd have a guest, they'd talk about the song. Give me an example. So we, you know, I'd have a guest, we'd talk about, you know, like what's your favorite Kanye song? Heartless. Heartless? Yeah. So we talk about Heartless, we talk about what's going on with you at that time, why, like what's your intro to Kanye? Why is Heartless your favorite my song? My intro to Kanye? I don't remember my the intro. The first, like, Kanye memory? Probably. I probably, like, I knew his music, but, like, him as an artist, mm -hmm. I probably came in around Through the Wire. Through the Wire? Yeah. I wasn't, I wasn't sold off Through the Wire. Yeah? Nah. nah. That makes sense. Because it does seem it. like a make a wishy. It does seem like, I you liked know his saying? ambition. But then. It was ambitious. He had another one and another one and right. another one, mm. you know. But then we talk about Heartless. We would talk about Barry uh, the video. Barry Bonds is a dope one. Barry Bonds? Yeah. That whole first album was was very stimulating. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We talk about the video. So the video was rotoscope, mm. which means that they shot it and then they painted over it. So each frame they painted over it. So you know all of this shit. I, through him, through my fandom of Kanye, I learned about all kind of different stuff. Oh. All kind of movies, all kind of art, all kind of stuff. All right. I need to focus more. I'm just a big nerd. I noticed that. I, like, whatever it is I'm into, I'm just going to be nerdy about it. Mm. I can't help it. It could be the coolest thing. It could be basketball, but I'm going to know, like, random assist averages in different so years. So you probably know shit about women that's just... Stupid, huh? Just dumbass nerd facts about women. Like women don't get earwax in their left ear or some <laughs> silly shit like that. You know what I've learned? What? All women are different. That's not true. <laughs> that's, that's, that's definitely not true. That's definitely not true. You gotta learn from that specific woman. Nah, nah, that's definitely not true. I was just bullshitting. I, I had to be, I had to be indifferent though. They are, de they are totally weirdos. And shit. I know a lot of weird shit about women. Like, check this out, for example. If you suck her left titty, she'll care about you more. The left one? Yeah, you know why? Because the heart is on the left. His titty is on top of the heart. That makes sense. Exactly. Yeah. Left-handed women suck dick from funny angles. Yeah. Like, if you have a left-handed girlfriend and you get a right-handed girlfriend, you'll be so used to getting that head from the opposite side. It's, it's just crazy. So the dominant hand determines the side. That she sucked dick from. Think so I might have been chilling on the non-dominant side right. so many times. Right. And then if not you get even a left-handed girlfriend, that's, the problem. that's what I'm saying. When your girl left-handed, you're always in a better position for her to give you some head. Because you y'all never... Like, like if you right-handed and she left-handed, y'all never like interfere. Y'all kind of just like join forces and become a Megatron. Like you using this side, she want that side. You get two righties, just this is a whole lot of confusion right here. My mind is blown. <laughs> At some point of this dissertation, I knew that it would be. A lot of guys don't pay attention to shit like this. I got to focus more. Yeah, you got to pay attention to the little things, man. Like, 
Like, if you ever walk a chick to her car, bro, mm -hmm. and notice that she got three different pairs of shoes in the back seat, that's who you want to fuck. That's some good ass <laughs> pussy right there. Women with good pussy are very indecisive when it comes to the shoes that they want to wear. So the three in the back seat means they you have made absolutely the decision nothing to do when she anything. got there. Right. Like these are these are shoes that she wore specifically that never made it back into the house. <laughs> See, that's a woman laughing. Because it's facts. But she knows they're in the car. So she could just go to the car and go. Right. Look back. She got options. Right. That's right. One one thing else I'll, I'll, I'll put you up on that you probably didn't pay attention to. Like if you if you ever at a house with a woman and like a, she go pissed and you can hear it, no matter where you are in the house, like a, a woman that pissed real loud, some of the best pussy <laughs> ever had. Like women with good pussy, they pee so loud and so hard with so much pressure. It's just fucking phenomenal. See, I, I would think that was a red flag. It's not. It's not. You want a woman with good, with some good PSI on her piss. But do I want a woman who would let me hear that so early? It's not up to you. It's not up to you. It's really not up to you. It's something she can't. It's called an affliction. She can't help it. It's just one of the bylaws of nature. What if she plays music? And you still hear it. That, that lets you know that that it's really loud because she's trying to create a diversion. Now you just hear music and a faint sound of a loud piss. You still hear it though. Yeah. Can't drown that out. I think I would go for that. If she plays music, that means she got the advantages of the loud piss, but the scruples to be like, you know what? This is not for everybody to know. I'm not just gonna keep giving you the good shit either. If you, if you ever meet a woman that doesn't know how to whisper or talk, but in one voice, don't fuck with her. She is evil and she fuck your chances of getting to heaven, getting into heaven up. Women that can only speak in one volume work for the devil. Would you whisper in the line to get into heaven? Nah, because if I'm in line, that means I'm getting in. I mean, God ain't the petty God that people want you to think. Like, he's not going to have you come in line so he can tell you in your face that you're not getting in. It don't work like that. I forgot you a rapper. Because God is a forgiving God. He can't. Like, you think God is going to be like, no, Rob Hayes. And then he see you, like, walking away sad. He's a forgiving God. He's going to be like, come here. Go on in, bro. You got the rest of eternity to get this shit right. Mm. Yeah. That's the thing about it. This bitch burning so good, I'm gonna be high as a motherfucking giraffe titty. <laughs> How does it feel being a reverend? How does it feel being a reverend? Well, <laughs> it's very challenging at times, man. <laughs> Because people try to put you in a box and they want you to be who they want you to be, not what you're supposed to be being. Yeah. Ooh. What you're supposed to be being. Mm -hmm. You feel me? So I have to do, you know, I have to go through a It's challenging because I have certain goals and, and things that God needs me to do. And I have to go about doing them in an obscure way because I'm doing what they might call street ministry. Well, I'm trying to bring in, like, it's going to take me a while first to bring in, bring them in mm -hmm. before we actually get to the message. But it's, I feel like as long as I can walk amongst the people and show them that there is hope for us, then we're going to get there. This is going to take a little time. Yeah. Salvation will be delivered. And I'm, and it's kind of like God, like, subleasing some work through me. Mm. Like, he's so overwhelmed. He can't get to everybody. So... He using me to facilitate some of the foolishness. That's all it is. Because he wants everybody to know that he is for us all. You know, whatever path you take getting to him, mm -hmm. as long as you get there. You feel me? 
I feel like I'm touching. Is, is the spirit moving through it? I felt Man, it. You, you felt I feel it. it. I feel it. You see how it just walked through? And it just, you know, it just comes about. It happens. It just happens. These are things that need to happen. Right. Just like that lady smoking that blunt right there. She is being delivered. Like she did her work. She did her work as a mother, as a grandmother. She did her work in the church. Who better? Who better to hit that blunt? You see the camera flashes behind her. The people are proud of her. That's the light. Yeah. Yeah, man. Smoking good, living good. <laughs> you know what I hate the most about this whole pandemic shit? What? We ain't seen no hoes all year. Yeah. We ain't even been able to just like, look, we miss sundress season. We missed a whole bunch of pool parties. And you know, just like random events where women will be scantily clad. We didn't get to see no booty shorts. The year before they had them cucumber parties. And that's what I'm saying. I believe that's why we are in the position that we are in right now. You don't fucking suck on agriculture. <laughs> You don't suck on no agriculture, man. But had I known we'd be here, I might have went. But I'm saying, though, this whole shit started from people sucking on vegetables and shit that were not prepared properly. Mm. When you eat vegetables, they have to be prepared. You don't just grab fucking broccoli and eat it. You run some water on it. Come on, somebody. Now we in the house. Can't even go outside. Because of the cucumber. It's, it's, it's grown men out here with real dicks, and these bitches rather suck vegetables. That zucchini ain't, on, ain't gonna love her. Yeah, some people probably brought a zucchini. Sometimes I just get I mad and just start yelling out obscenities, man. I don't mean to call these hoes bitches and stuff like that. I'm sorry. I'm not living like that no more. I had to take a moment just to gather myself. I'm sorry. I feel like oh, I was about did. to go in a dark place. Hello, my name is Carlos Miller, and this episode of the 85 South Show is sponsored in part by the good folks over there at BlueChew.com. People ask me all the time, well, how long does it take for a Blue Chew to work? And me giving you a professional recommendation? I would say you should take your blue chew between 30 and 45 minutes before you plan on tearing that ass up. <laughs> hey man, this is Carlos Miller. And you know the hard part about doing these ads? If you wanna tear that ass up all 2020, fellas, I'm not saying you're not already tearing that ass up. You, everybody say they don't need a blue chew. Nobody needs a blue chew, but you want one. Hell, I don't need one, but I want one. I would prefer to have it. It's, it just gives me extra confidence because I know I could naturally tear that ass up. But with a blue chew, that ass is getting teared up. I am, the, I will tear that ass up. Ask somebody who fucked me recently. Blue chew works. Right now we have a special deal for our listeners. Visit bluechew.com and get your first shipment absolutely free when you use the special promo code 85SOUTH. Just pay $5 for the shipping. Again, that's blue, B-L-U-E, chew, dot, like a period, com. Blue Chew is the better, cheaper, faster choice, and we thank them for sponsoring our podcast. How you liking the L.A. living, though, man, being from Atlanta? It's a, lot of, a lot of weird shit goes on in L.A., man. It does, but I haven't seen it yet. But every time I go to a party, in my head, I'm like, is this when it happens? Are you anticipating? Is this when I see the weird stuff? You anticipating it? I'm not anticipating it, but I'm just ready. You always prepared. Always ready. Like, I don't have a physical walking stick, but I go into, like, those things with a mental walking stick. Right. And I feel like, you know, you're doing the right thing by doing it. You did nothing wrong. But LA is king. It can be very, very strange at times. 
I get why some stuff that seems weird. It's not necessarily that it's weird. It's just that LA is the type of place where you can get pressed by some gang members. Mm-hmm. Or some or some random motherfuckers dressed like clowns and superheroes. <laughs> but it's the same pressure. Yeah. It's the same pressure. Like you ain't never had street beef with a nigga on some stilts. <laughs> This could happen. In it LA. could happen. A Karen might attack you mm -hmm. for smoking a medical marijuana cigarette in front of her dog. A homeless man may think you're his buddy from the war and try to hug you. All types of motherfuckers from places you've never heard of. Dude told me he was from Jomithalaya. I couldn't even Google that shit. I don't even know what Jamintalea is. You ever heard of that? I don't You're really. You a nerd. You heard of Jamintalea? I haven't. But the fact that it's got myth in it makes me skeptical. Oh, well, and maybe I'm saying it wrong, but you know, that's like, what I like maybe it doesn't exist. Maybe it's a myth. I just remember that accent, Jamintalea. I don't know. When I was in LA, I went to this liquor store that had a restaurant in the back of it. I don't know if it was. The liquor store was in the back of the restaurant. Well, I'm just saying, there was a liquor store adjacent to a restaurant. And you can actually order food through the liquor store. Oh, that's crazy. I'm not gonna expose where this place is because I don't want nobody trying to find my spot. It's decent though. How was the food? The burgers are fucking wonderful. I think the rest of the food is shitty though. You ever, you ever like met a chick offline and was disappointed. It wasn't necessarily mm -hmm. like disappointed, but you didn't want to fuck no more. Yeah, like I was like, I could see how you look like your pictures, but you you don't seem like your pictures. You don't seem like. Like I see how you got that angle, but there, there's other angles. Mm. Mm. I think that's probably one of the, oof. <laughs> Not necessarily that she don't look like the pictures, but like you said, it's something just not. Like, I like the online you. Mm-hmm. Not the real life you. Yeah. Because you, you can tell the switch up. Right. Because they switched up. Demeanor's different. Mm. I remember I met up with this one chick and she had on them, them boots that I don't like. I was just so over that shit, bro. What boots are the boots that you don't like? Them little witch boots. Witch boots? You know them little boots that all the chicks be wearing? The little waitress witch boots. Do they have a buckle? Yeah. I fucking hate them boots. I don't like them boots, man. I fucking like. I don't like those boots and those little flat shoes, the little slip-on flats. Mm -hmm. the, I fucking hate them. The ones that look like little hot tamales or whatever. <laughs> I hate those, bro. I hate those. So those boots are a deal breaker if they Top got them on. Top five most attract, unattractive things a woman can do. Have those fucking boots on. What if they are in possession of those boots? Like they didn't have them on? But you see that she got it. I knew him. that she wanted to. <laughs> I knew that she wanted to. Yeah. Hell yeah. I don't like how women get to get away with like wearing cheap ass shit. I think that's fucked up. Like if you see a dude with some fake jewelry on, he'll be lame as fuck, right? But if you see a lady with all this fake ass jewelry on, she just has imagination. You get what I'm saying? If it was equal, would you feel the same way? Nah. I feel like we always gonna complain about something. You know? I'm just not that I have a desire or a urge to wear fake jewelry. I I think that shit is crazy, but I feel like people who wear a lot of fake jewelry are practicing for when they get real jewelry. You know what I'm saying? Like that's what I tell myself. Just like keep up with it. Like what would I do in a situation? What if this was expensive? Like you get in the habit. I don't know. <laughs> J-O-N, what is this music, my nigga? 
I like it. I like it. It's like, it's like funeral music for people who still alive. <laughs> 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 like some bad shit about to happen. It ain't happened yet. <laughs> they should do that. You could do that. What? Have funerals for people who are still alive. Uh uh uh. I think that's weird. Maybe like, a celebration of life. Yeah, yeah. We should do celebrations of life though. Like I feel like of life. we don't have enough points in our life where we can just celebrate us. Mm-hmm. Like, people want to wait till your birthday. That's one day a year. I want to be celebrated about once a month. At least every quarter. What every day semester. of the month? Every semester. I feel like every semester. Fuck a birthday. We need to come up with a still alive day. Still alive still, day. Yeah. My birthday in August, nigga, but you know, my still alive day in April, nigga. We, we, we gonna fuck off again, you feel me? We fucking off again. <laughs> Bro, I was thinking, let me ask you this, Rob Hayes. If you could pick another race or nationality or culture to be a part of, would you, would you pick one other than black? Like, knowing how black we are right now, right? We deep in the black community. Like, if you had to pick, would you pick something else? I would keep the same thing, but I would find out all the information. How? I'm getting the pick stuff. Oh. So I, I well, thought I would be. Whoever you talking to is privy yeah. to some other shit. I yeah, see I'm you, thinking. I see how I, you think. If you got I, that lateral thinking. If I'm thinking, you know, if I'm talking to somebody and they say, hey, you you can pick whatever race. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna keep the same race. Just tell me how I got here. Oh. So let me ask you this though. Say for instance, you get to heaven, right? And you just mm-hmm. chilling in God like Rob Hayes. Bro, I hate to ask you this shit, but I need you to go on earth and be a nigga one more time for me. Could you, could you do that? I could probably do it. <laughs> the last time? Like more. I need you to live a whole black ass life. Same struggle, same beaten path. It's gonna be even harder this time. <laughs> would you do it? I, I think I would do it. Cause I know it would be tough, but at the same time it would be fun. Yeah. It'd be both tough and fun. Sometimes the tough makes it more fun. Sometimes Bro, you, the fun makes I it just more know tough. at some I just I don't know, man. It's it's gonna be too hard to be a nigga knowing that you about to go to heaven. Like going through this life and you like you know you good, nigga. That shit name I don't know. You, so what? Shoot, Mr. Officer! <laughs> Shoot! <laughs> no, I ain't got no fucking license! <laughs> Shoot! <laughs> do what the fuck y'all came to do! <laughs> You'd have a sense of urgency? Nah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have no sense of urgency, bro. You can't guarantee a nigga nothing. Nigga gonna you, he gonna tell everybody, bro, God got me, let me in this motherfucker, <laughs> man. Come on, bro, I seen the nigga. Oh, <laughs> uh, here we go, here we go. <laughs> bro, you remember when I was alive last time, bro? In my old baby pictures, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> bro, this me right here. Look at that. That's the old me, bro. This me. This is where I was at. Who knows? I gotta quit thinking of stupid shit like that, man. Man, that's genius. You think that's stupid? I be thinking. What do you think is smart? Shit. I don't know, man. Octopus. <laughs> Seen a nigga. I'm going back. I got another octopus story, bro. It's some of the most fascinating shit ever. Look. It was this dude, he took a fucking octopus and he was trying to study that bitch in the lab. He's getting ready to go home. He's like, what the fuck I'm gonna do? He put the motherfucker in a jar, right? And then he put the shit in a tank. The octopus unscrewed the fucking jar, got out the tank, went and got something to eat, came back, put itself back in the jar. 
Most unbelievable shit I ever seen in my life. <laughs> <laughs> and if you don't believe me, look it up. It's online. I watched real? the whole fucking two hour documentary about some octopus, man, and I confess. I do I do shit like that. I smoke this shit and just be sitting there like <laughs> I'm at my house like I'm visiting. <laughs> 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 Look, that nigga found that shit, bro. That face. Turn it to the camera so they can this look it up. This is real. <laughs> like, a part of me felt like you made it up. But a part Rob, of me was real excited at how vivid your imagination Rob is. Rob Hayes, this, this is probably one of the best things about knowing me personally, bro. A lot of the shit I say is not made up. Yeah. 92.6. So 93% of the shit that I say is, is factual based. I say it, but you don't have to believe it, Rob Hayes. I, I've had titty milk squirted on me from across the room cool. in real life. You ain't been where I've been. Who the fuck grown? I know it wasn't a grown man back there grown. <laughs> Fucking Chad Oubre. Oh, your day is coming, my nigga. Wait till you become a daddy. You don't even know the type of shit that can come out the human body. Yeah, I've been there. He probably ain't never even seen a real life squirt up his folks. <laughs> he, ain't, he ain't been where I've been. I don't think I've seen that either. You never been with a real squirter? I don't think so. How old are you? 32. Bruh, God gonna bless you. Just know a squirter coming in your life. You might have to. You might have to broaden, the, like open up the range of the kind of women you like, but you definitely need to run into a squirter because it's real. It's not no Hollywood shit, bro. This is real. Play me some squirter music, Jay. <laughs> this young nigga don't believe squirters is real. 32. I feel like you've been cheated. You went to college? I went to college. And you ain't meet no squirters. And that's the part that's gonna shock you. When you realize who it is that's the squirter, it's gonna blow your fucking mind. So you can, you're gonna look back at all them times that you knew that lady before you knew she was a squirter. And then once you see that, I'll make sense. I wanna introduce you to one just so you can know one. Like I'm not saying you have to fuck it, but I want you to know. There are women out there with superpowers. That sounds crazy. It does. It sounds like some shit that I made up, right? But it's actually real. I feel like I offended you when I said that, and I. You didn't. I didn't mean. I'm, you I'm know. hurt. Big, I'm hurt for you. You know how you ask your homeboy, like, man, have you seen my favorite movie? And he's like, nah. And it's like, fuck. I'm gonna give you so much information that maybe the next time that I see you, we can re we can revisit this, and you'll be like, "Those oh, that square the shit you said was real." Damn, I hate that you don't know about it already. So many things we could discuss. Some people say it's pee. I don't care what it is. <laughs> I like my bitch wearing Nikes. Just do it. Just do it. I don't give a fuck if it's a figment of my imagination. You mean to tell me I met a bitch nasty enough to pee in this bed? We'll do it. That's the type of <laughs> disgusting I'm, I want to see. Pit, especially if it's not my bed. This a hotel piss on this shit. My flight leave at 7 in the morning. They ain't coming to clean this room up to at least 10. Squirt <laughs> on this shit. <laughs> Squirt everywhere. I will sleep on the couch. This is great. Yes. Because now. Some women are so considerate, they don't just squirt everywhere. Hold on, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Hold the squirt in. Now, if you leave a hotel room, it's got a wet spot in the bed, they know what to assume. I'm a gentleman, though. I at least snatch the seats off. Leave them by the door. These just things that happen. That's responsible. And that's all I ever try to be, Rob Hayes. I don't want no smoke. I don't want no smoke. 
Chad don't even know. He jinxed himself with it when he made the little snarky remark about the titty milk. Now it's going, it's going in his eye. <laughs> oh, man, I'm just saying. One day he's going to be a father. <coughs> titty milk right in the face. He's going to taste it. Because he ain't going to know them titties. You don't know how long titties hold milk. That baby be ninth to 10th grade to still be a little, little milk every now and then. Real? Yeah. Did you know if a woman who used to breastfeed is around the baby and the baby start crying, titty milk just shows up? <laughs> now that's some shit to Google right there. You don't have to Google that. That's a fact. I know about some titties. Ask Newface. He got four daughters. And they smart as hell. Pretty sure they were breastfed. You believe in freeing the nipple? Hell yeah. The nipple should have been free. If you think about it, bro, a titty is not nothing to be afraid of. We watch dangerous shit all the time. People getting murdered in all these fucking crime shows. And they showing you all these elaborate scams and schemes and murderous plots. What could a harmless titty do? I feel like we need titties on TV to make the story more believable. I'll never think we'll be at a point in America where big titties will be TV friendly. Have you ever Man. noticed all the titties you've seen on TV have been around the same size? I'm just now noticing. Like I, I didn't notice before, but now that you brought it to my right. attention. And if a woman wants to show off her body, the whole titty, who are we? That's what this whole, they've been saying this since the 50s and 40s. Some women want their titties out, the whole titty. Like with no discretion. That's how they feel at the moment. The moment that the women get mad, what's the first thing they're gonna do? Take that goddamn bra off. Because when your, your nipple is free and your titties are able to, and you like you comfortable in them titties doing what they wanna do, that's when women can just be powerful and do what they need to do. So of course I'm with the movement. Whatever them titties need from me, they got it. So you feel like if we free the nipple, we'll be on another level. I feel like freeing the nipple will liberate women and they will be, they will be comfortable enough to take it to the next level. Now that that's out the way. You feel me? What's they got that? a list of shit that they want done. Yeah. Freeing the nipple is, is not even all the way up there on the list. That's sure. something that they want, but that's not something they're gonna like really keep pressing the issue about. I feel like that movement has lost a lot of steam. And I like where they was going. Cause they, they had an Occupy Atlanta boobs protest. Did you know that? No, I did I not. I went there, I went there. I got photographic evidence where they had a sign that said, New Face seen it on my Instagram back in the day. It comes up on my memories every now and then. Guy was holding a big sign and said, Occupy Atlanta's boobs. Well, I was Man. there. How many people were there? It was a nice turnout. They, it was actually, it was, a, it was a breast cancer march on one side and then an Occupy Atlanta boobs on the other side. So yeah. They co-op or did they not know each other was showing up? I felt like the Occupy Atlanta boobs movement was extending a hand. Okay. Or a boob. Okay. <laughs> Cause you gotta keep them alive. Yeah. In order to free. Right. Nothing wrong with that at all. I remember when the Thrashers left, they had a protest. It was about 12 people out there. For real? Yeah. I feel like the Thrashers had to leave though. Yeah. Because we had now they got that soccer team. But the Thrashers had to walk so that soccer team could run. Yeah. That's real. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm ready for the like the Atlanta landscape, like the sports landscape is pretty consistent, you know, if you live here. You know, we have our ups and our downs, but it's pretty consistent for the most part. Like I'm ready for the Matt Ryan era to be done. Yeah. I'm ready to move on. Yeah. I just feel like a lot of that shit is his fault. I don't know why. 
And it's nothing even, nothing even personal, but the shit he does, it just aggravates me so much. I just wish so many bad things happened to him in the Atlanta way, though. Like, I hope his lemon pepper wings never extra wet. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, I hope every time he go to J.R. Crickets, they fuck his order up. Like, I hope he catch Atlanta traffic going and coming. I hope he hit a pothole and it's one of them slow leaks on his tire. <laughs> You get what I'm saying? Like you have to watch it go down on that little sensor. I hope like when he get to Magic City, they're not letting nobody else in. Like, no, we can't, man. We can't. We can't. Like I hope the Migos don't put his name in no song. Like he don't just get no love in the city. You feel me? Mm-hmm. So it's just him. The rest of the he team. He's been there the longest. Yeah, that's true. And I feel like somebody over there is giving him a false sense of confidence. Quarterbacks don't leave. That's what I'm noticing. Well, I'm, that's what I'm saying. That he not, it's not that he needs to leave. It's just like I'm just at the point where I'm like, damn, man, Ryan, what you about to do? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're not kicking him out, but you, no, you send a signal. Like, Like, it's cool that, you know, it's just that it's time to move on, bro. We see other franchises flourishing, bro. Tom Brady plays for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. That nigga skipped right over Atlanta. Mm-hmm. You been to Tampa before? I've never been to Tampa. It's cool. It's cool. But Atlanta, though. Yeah. That Atlanta, though. From Atlanta. I'm telling you. You know how to live. And for Tom Brady, he loved Quavo. I was going to go to Tampa for the Super Bowl. That's what I'm saying. <clears throat> if you already live in Tampa, though, there's not even a big event. You there already. It's just traffic. Hey, man, welcome back to the 85 South Show. Just some random shit that we got going on today. Man, I just get high and talk shit to my partner, Rob Hayes. He has such a... A wide range of knowledge of things, man. We just in here smoking good weed. Well, I am. He can't participate like I can because, you know, he got contractual obligations. Pro possibly. Probably. Maybe. I don't know. Whatever. But we in here, though. Got the motherfucking $85 million LeBrons on. I see. These are the infrared LeBron 17s. Yeah. It's my folk now. My family. Snoop starting the boxing league? He need to. He need to commentate every fight. Snoop Dogg is one of the best commentators that we didn't even know we needed. It's a perfect lane. Bro, Snoop Dogg is good at everything. You watching violence, they should be able to <clears throat> say whatever they want. Hey man, the way he fucking commentated that fight let us know that Snoop is the voice of the culture. And as long as there is a Snoop Dogg, he will always need to be needed. He is, we are looking at the modern day Morgan Freeman. Mm. That's how important Snoop Dogg is to the culture. We're going to need him to narrate a lot of shit. Hey, did you ever see the um, when they had Snoop Dogg narrating the um, animal documentaries. Oh, yeah. That's some of the greatest shit that's ever been mm -hmm. concocted. Cause I like Planet Earth without Snoop Dogg. Man, so give me with some Snoop Dogg. This, bro. Come on, bro. Come on. Anything that David Attenborough is doing is fucking amazing. That's the, that's the narrator, dude. Oh, yeah. He be making me sad now. <laughs> it's just that he, the way he can say an open-ended statement with so much concern, but it's kind of a question too. The baby penguins are going to stand alone and wait for the mother if she returns. <laughs> Bruh, those documentaries are so fucking amazing. They got the fucking penguins, right? The penguins come out, they fucking wobbling. 
They jump in the water. These niggas got the camera. Like, are they negotiating with these animals? How the fuck did they catch Man. the dive, the landing? Then this motherfucker swim 336 miles to another country. They got a wide shot of that. They catch him coming out the water. Like, who the fuck puts this shit together? This is some genius shit. I watch it so much. I watch the videos of how they make Planet Earth. Where Damn. they be in, like, oh, we had to sit in this box for three days Bruh, but I waiting be on like, this one bird. I've been on TV before, so I know how TV works. I just can't see them requesting that dolphin jump in that water three fucking times. <laughs> All right, can we get it one more time? <laughs> Somebody get the penguin? Is the penguin ready? I know, man. I know it's cold out here, penguin, but we just got to get it one more time. All right, we're going live on this one, guys. Okay, so when you jump in this time, we're going to need you to just go ahead and swim 336 kilometers, okay? <laughs> just go full speed. We'll meet you over there. Uh, we'll get a couple shots of you peeking up out of the ice, <laughs> and then we'll go to a full-on wide of you actually walking. Okay, um, so what are we doing with these kids? Are we taking the kids or are we leaving these kids? Are you coming back or no? Oh, it's totally up to the kids. So if they get eaten by anything, just capture all of that. <laughs> You're just going to keep swimming with the rest of the kids and whatever kids. Cool. So we'll meet you there with whatever kids you have left. Um, we got to go. We got to get these guys out of here because uh, we're going to go into overtime. Yeah. So when we get this last one of you jumping off this ice, we're just going to go live with that. And then we're going to break all this equipment down and we'll just meet you over there. Uh, on the other side of the North Pole, if that's fine with you. <laughs> All right. So when we get over there, we'll uh, we'll get a couple shots in the in the water, but before you actually come out, and then we'll get you out and uh, dry you off, and then we'll break for lunch. Is that sound cool to you? <laughs> All right, cool. <laughs> like, I would just love to man. see how they fucking make this shit happen, man. Dude sounds sad about the coral reefs. He'd be like, Bro, the, coral the coral reefs, reefs are dying, and once they go. So will the rest of the planet. But that really won't happen. It how, won't. how are they going to come back? Because, man, the same way that those fucking coral reefs got there, they're going to replace themselves. Mm. Yeah. You just got to stay the fuck from over there. And they always say we. When they say we, they mean white people. White people have completely ruined every corner of this fucking planet. <laughs> yeah, I've never touched they a They went reef. and jumped and put their funky ass in every ocean. <laughs> That's why the coral reefs is dying. <laughs> you ever touch cotton candy? You don't touch cotton candy, the shit will disappear. <laughs> Put your fucking nasty germy ass hand. That whole fucking cotton candy gonna disappear. And that's all that's happening to the coral reefs. The fucking reefs, man. If you would if they would have kept their nasty ass out of that water, none of this shit would have been dying. You see when they went to Chernobyl? They fucked that up, too. They had a whole nuclear thing happen in Chernobyl yeah, in the, the 80s. Yeah, in Russia. Yeah, Chernobyl. And now... It was an explosion. Now they got foxes. They got plants. They got radioactive animals. They got birds. Yeah. Walking around. And hu they say humans can't live there for another 60 years. Exactly. So how did they shoot it? Who touched the camera when it came back? <laughs> Do you know that there's a, there's a whole fucking uh, corner of Instagram of people who sneak to Chernobyl to do photo shoots and shit like that? No, I didn't the know radiation that. radiation is so high that it will fucking, it will cook you from the inside out. You ever heard of a fucking blistered heart? This is the type of shit that happens to people who've been exposed to high levels of radiation. A you, blistered heart? A blistered heart. You literally throw up all your insides and it'll turn your skin into a fucking film. And all your skin will fall off and turn black and there'll just be all these fucking burns from the inside out. Like it will take, it'll take a long ass time before this shit actually comes out of you. You just fucked up. One of the worst possible ways to die. So you gotta run with the camera. Fuck the camera. You about to Don't go over there, man. <laughs> Motherfuckers ain't supposed to be over there for 60 years. But I'm saying not like that's from direct exposure to radiation. But if you go over there and you expose to that shit, you'd probably more than likely get some fucking debilitating illness or some severe forms of cancer or some shit. But it's, it'll fuck you up most definitely. All your teeth will fall out.
we will fall off. The worst shit you could possibly think of. Wildfire, wildfires in Chernobyl this year cause radiation to spike 16 times. Man. Yep, so definitely don't want to be over there. This is some weird shit we're talking about. Today. Hey, man. Octopus, radiation, and nuclear weapons and shit. Man. And only, only Rob Hayes can bring this out, man. Come on. What do you feel like is going to happen after this coronavirus shit? I feel like some people are never going to be the same. Some people are going to wear masks always. I'm one of those people. Like, even when it's, even if it's done and it feels like it's back, I'm still one of those wear the mask. Because as a black man in America, I never thought I would see the day where I would be allowed or invited to wear a mask anywhere in public. <laughs> I go, I get to go in the bank with a mask on, walk mm -hmm. out with money. That shit used to get you life. I love wearing a mask. I wish that, it, I hope that this becomes more acceptable and they come out with, with a whole mask that cover the whole fucking bottom dome of your face. <clears throat> I'm definitely for wearing those fucking face helmets and shit. I just didn't want to buy one first. Cause it's, it's too weird now. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm with the whole, I'm a masker. You a masker? Hey, I'm a masker. I'm a masker as well. Hey, I want to go to a masquerade. You feel me? <laughs> I, I, I'm telling you, put your fucking mask on. Like I know I don't. I couldn't do the show with a mask on like now, but yeah. outside of this shit, I got my mask on. Don't even talk to me. I don't like small talk from people without masks. I don't either because I feel like they don't give a fuck. They yeah. out here just in the radiation. They're like, how you doing? Like you don't care. You don't give a fuck because you don't care <laughs> you don't got about a mask you. On. I don't like the motherfuckers who pull their shit down too much, especially if you got the paper mask on. Mm -hmm. Leave that, leave that on, mm -hmm. leave that on. You need to leave that on because that is not even safe. First of all, this is a year we found out the surgical mask is not the best mask. Right. Which means they've been doing surgery this whole time. Probably with the fucking mask down. With a bad mask. Come on. They've been opening up bodies mm -hmm. and. Achilles and mm. knees and delivering babies. Mm. I wonder if a surgeon ever had like, like a hangover doing a surgery and then saw the shit and was like, mm. <laughs> 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 all that shit looked like the sausage, egg, and cheese. I eat this one. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. I'll be right back. Mm. That shot, that goddamn shot, you bitch. <laughs> that goddamn shot, you bitch. <laughs> That's fucked up, man. You ever had surgery? I never had surgery. I had surgery on my eye. I had fucking scar tissue on my left eye. It was like a fucking shit. Was like it kept swelling up, so they had to like flip my eyelid up and cut that shit, get all that shit out. It was fucked up. It was successful though, right? It was very successful as far as I know. But when I got the surgery, they were like, you better be glad you got it when you got it because you was going, that shit was just going to keep coming back and you was going to have to have another one anyway. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's the only surgery I had though. I mean, that sounds intense. Did you have to like wear special glasses when you came out? Uh, nah, I wore some some regular ass Oakleys, some nigga shades, some Lokes or something. I drove home after that shit with one eye. Cause I ain't planned that shit right. I ain't know they was gonna do it right then. I had blood in my eye. It was fucked up. One of the worst experiences I've ever had was blood in my eye. Did you have an eye patch? Nah, they didn't even give me a patch. How is you gonna get a patch? They cut your eye and you still don't get a patch. I didn't get a patch. I got a. I don't. I don't even think I got a band aid. Because the shit. The, like, they were just under, like it keep it closed. I lit. They wouldn't even say keep it closed. <laughs> It was just like, it'll heal. I was like, uh, it will. It was a big ass, like they flipped my eyelid up and they made a big ass X on my eye and then they just let that shit just drain out. Like she just pushed it out. Mm. It was fucked up, man. I was like looking at it the whole time. It was, I still have nightmares about that shit. Man. Yeah. I had my toe drain one time. That sounds fucked up too. Yeah. I dropped a uh, shelf on my toe. Freshman Fuck. year of college. 
and I had all this blood under my toenail. Damn. They drilled a hole in my toenail. That's got the fucked blood up. out. That's fucked up. That sounds like some torturous ass shit. And we had uh, tryouts for our JV, I mean, not JV, our um, intramural basketball team. You didn't go in there with a drained toe. I went with a drained toe. Did I you did. make the team? 17 people tried it out. 15 people made the team. And they, they sent an email <laughs> to everybody <laughs> with a list of who made the team. I wasn't on the list. With a drain toe? I had a drain toe. Did you toe. let them know? Like, I told them. I told them. Like, this is not my best work. The doctor told me he had to do a subguginal hematoma. Damn. Mm-hmm. That's fucked up, man. Shit, I hate you didn't make that bitch. Yeah, man. Because if you would have made it, you would have certified yourself as a street legend. Not saying that you're not, but that just would have added more to the myth of Rob. Yeah, if I would have if I would have played a whole season with a drain toe, damn man, and got bitches too. They wasn't on the email though. The now we are gonna have know. people in the comments telling us like the worst shit they done been through. And let me tell you, nobody goes over and beyond like our fans. I'm sure somebody's had a fucking spinal tap or like some crazy shit. Like the comments gonna get crazy. You know they took my whole skeleton out. <laughs> Put my shit back in. I'm two inches shorter, man. <laughs> Cause we've I've seen some tragic shit that people have had done. Yeah, man. That shit is wild. Shout out to everybody who survived some traumatic shit. You know. You all right? You good? Got your mask on. What else going on in the world, Rob Hayes? Um, working on a show. Which one? Sherman Showcase. Who's Comes in on that? IFC. The AMC. Independent Film Channel. Mm -hmm. So you're getting that independent money. You're independent with it. Come Wrote on man. it. Uh, the last season, I was in some sketches. I played Morris Day. I played uh, Terrence Howard. With the guitar. I haven't brought the guitar out yet. Hey, that's why Rob Hayes is a legend, bro. This nigga got a keytar. And if, for those of you who don't know what that is, that's a guitar, that's a keyboard. <laughs> and he has it for no reason. Just has that Can't motherfucker. even play it. Can't even play it. He pulled that bitch out, but he looked like he could play it. Mm -hmm. You know you how you do that? You I gotta be a gangster. Come on. That's one of my favorite jokes of Rob Hayes, bro. Yeah, Gotta thanks, be a gangster. Cause it's so fucking well thought out. The iPad with no fingerprints on it? You know how you do that? Gotta be a gangster. Come on, man. It's fucking crazy. But uh, Sherman's Diallo and Bashir, the same team that brought together uh, Southside. Okay, talk to they him. They got the sketch show. And uh, yeah, we, we just finished writing the second season. It should come out next year, sometime in the summer. Mm -hmm. It's a sketch show, but it's like Soul Train. Mm. So it's like a dance show. Who is Sherman? Sherman is, is a person that has always looked the same throughout time. He's mm. the host of the show mm. from Detroit. The show started in the 70s, but still going on now. Mm. Saturday morning. OK. And we just peep different episodes, different things throughout time. There are different, different characters on the show. Right. Charades, it's kind of like Prince, kind of like a lot of different, you know, funk artists played by Vic Mensa. Shout out to Vic Mensa. I fuck with dude. He weird. He's a very strange guy, but he's a very different mind. He came in Wild and Out and did like eight episodes one time. Really? I seen he did a Wild Style and like. He was there. He was yeah. Like on the cast. Some people come and just do a whole bunch of episodes. Like that one dude from that, uh, what's his name? Shamik Moore? 
Shaolin Fantastic from the Netflix show. Okay. The Get Down. He came and did like a whole season one time. And what's the other guy? Denzel Curry. He came and did a bunch of episodes at once. Just random people do shit like that. Yeah. Do y'all know or do y'all just go out there and just see who's out here no. out there? No, no. Cause they don't never know who's like you can't never confirm like with celebrities or whatever. People be like, Los, you need to get such and such on the couch or get him in the trap. I'd be like, man, do y'all know how exhausted that shit be? Cause it's like you can hit them directly and they be like, man, I wanna do that shit, I'm gonna do that. And then you get the info, then they get to talk to all these different motherfuckers. And and then they hit you and then they're like, we coming. And then they hit you back and be like, we're not coming. <laughs> then the day we be like, we'll have another motherfucker be like, hey man, such and such is outside. Like, why you just? <laughs> <laughs> that should be stressful, man. Stressful. But it's, it's worth it sometimes. Sometimes you get some people in here, you be like, fuck we gonna do with that shit. <laughs> What the fuck we gonna do with that, man? <laughs> what the fuck we gonna do with that, man? Turn it into something. I, <laughs> fuck it. We'll drop all these motherfuckers. I don't give a shit. Drop everything. Joe, you hear? Just drop everything. <laughs> we'll let them sort it out. <laughs> Get the whole team together. Just drop everything. Fuck it. But they said they just like when we just drop random shit. Try to tell them that's the way. They don't listen to me though. Yeah. We got a, we getting ready to drop some shit. We got a whole app coming out. Yeah. yeah, we about to open this shit up, man. And we're trying to branch out and extend our show to more platforms. You dig what I'm saying? I would subscribe to an 85 South app. Really? What would you Monthly. like? What would like as a fan, like as an eighty-five percent? What would you want to see on the app? On the app, I would want to see, okay, funny like clips, like the clips, but just like you just gave me an idea. All the loose legs together. You gave me an idea. <laughs> Hold up, pause. What you got? Okay. You, on the on the sh on the app, we gonna have the pictures, right? Like, say for instance, like a picture like this from the show. Okay. Bro, we need our own meme generator. Mmm. Wouldn't that be hard? That would be That'd be hard, be hard wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah. Well, you, like you said, you can get your favorite, watch your favorite loose leg clips, right? But then you can get the screen cap. And then you put in. You, you can just, like, click where you want it, right? Mm -hmm. Then that shit come out in HD. Then you can put your captions or whatever the fuck, make the meme on that bitch. Some you could have the top line is like this podcast is for, Ooh. and in the bottom you can customize it. God damn it, Rob Hayes. I think we just went to a multi billion dollar entertainment mm -hmm. company. Mm -hmm. All right, what else you want to see? So you said just like specific shit, Lou Lid, shit talking, Chico Bean philosophies, Wrestling. random shit Low said, Rebel Radio. Ooh. Oh, so okay, so you saying we gotta we gotta be like we gotta have our category game together. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So if you just like a search bar and then you type in loose leg, everything loose leg pop up. Everything loose leg pop up. What you got? <laughs> Something about some titties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe yeah. See, we might. We should, bro. We should start an OnlyFans page where we just post pictures of fan submitted titties. Mm. Then we'll take a percentage of the titty money, donate that back to the contributors. De I'm just trying to get into that OnlyFans game. I don't know who titties I'm gonna use, but somebody need to let me use their titties. If you, if you a lady out there and you want to start an OnlyFans page and you need a manager. Let's get this money. You got the titties, and I got the clout. And you got the pussy, and I'm going to get the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know, man. The, the, the people at OnlyFans saw the joke that I did on here about falling asleep on OnlyFans. And the lady said, if I ever wanted to get one, it would be verified. And I was like, what you think, old fella? <laughs> 
You dig look up at you like Mr. Turtle. I ain't never been on camera before. <laughs> 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 Go ask Mr. Al. I think a lady should have an OnlyFans page, not being naked at first. I think, well, I think she should start off naked and just put clothes on. Mm. Everybody on that bitch getting naked. Ain't nobody starting off naked, getting dressed. And then she starts putting on like more and more complicated stuff. Yes, yes. Shit that she need help getting in. Mm-hmm. I heard of course, there with the laces on OnlyFans, and though. People on there making vegan food and shit. I wouldn't pay money to watch somebody else cook and eat. It's just me, though. What, what would you pay, like, monthly to watch? I would pay monthly to watch Michael Jordan gamble. I would. That'd be hard. Yeah. I just thought about it. I couldn't, like, subscribe to one OnlyFans. I, if it was just a whole bunch of random ass titties, just random titties throughout the world. I would subscribe to that. I don't want to keep seeing the same titties every day. That'd be cool. So that it's defeats just like, the purpose of the internet. I don't want to be in a relationship. That's too committed to me. It's a bunch of people in the service. Right. I'm like, this bitch again, I ain't, you ain't got no friends. Just <laughs> randomizes who you see. Yeah. I'm surprised that black porno made it through the DVD era. Think about it. It was the same 20 people on every DVD. But if you got one, it was too late before you knew it. Mm -hmm. They made hundreds of booty talks. You know what's crazy? Is I just bought a box Chevy, right? I bought this box Chevy. It came with about... 75 classic porno DVDs. In the trunk? But yeah, it was a bag full of DVDs for like Booty Talk, 47, 40s. It started right around the 40s. Big black asses, <laughs> Spanish chicks and black dicks, stupid booties, hood bitches, like a gang of shit. My pops was like, shit, give me some of them. I wanna see what they doing. <laughs> I was like, Pops, you take whatever you want out of this bag. But you bring it back. These are classics. These are these are random, special edition bathroom man copies. You hear me? He bought these from a nigga. And I got to keep this alive. This is black man treasure. You will never hit a lick like this ever again. You found somebody's hey, stash. I'm going to find, we're gonna, I'm going to find some niggas who got a whole bunch of those fucking uh, black porno DVDs and do like a porno exchange when the world open back up. We got to preserve black culture. That's how Netflix started. Nah, well, fuck Netflix. We need, I just want it to be just for like flicks. Just for flicks? Yeah, we need like a black porno hall of fame or something. Pinky didn't get, Pinky did not get her just due. Pinky was a game changer. Where would the black porno hall of fame be? Where? <laughs> yeah. It's, I don't know. Shit. It's it got to be, be at a random only, hotel. I think it's got to, yeah. Probably like Atlanta or Houston. Miami. The award ceremony got to start in the middle. Place. Like and you just place, don't know what's happening. Ocala, Florida or some shit. <laughs> yeah, put that motherfucker in Ocala, man. That, that's fitting. Jacksonville. <laughs> <laughs> Put that bitch in Tallahassee, man. <laughs> Savannah, Georgia. You know, it's got to be somewhere where you know it's kind of off the beaten path a little bit. Yeah. Would it have a highway sign? I don't know. I feel like Detroit would be a good host. Well, let's put it in Florida, somewhere where people can go all year round. Florida is a nice vibe. Like three exits. Yeah. The black. Porn on Hall of Fame. Yeah. B P H O L. Yeah. Cat going twice, three, four times a year. Cat giving to it. Y'all come right this way. Come right this way. 
We're going to get, we got the BBWs coming up. Yeah. Then we're going to get to the squirters and shit. Just follow me. I got you. Look, sir, we're going to start taking questions here in a minute, man. Come on, man. We're about to, come on. Hey, everybody put your 3D glasses on. We're going, in, <laughs> we're going into 1980s. This is, this is what we call our 80s wing. This is more of your cassette tapes, uh, you know, Betamax, things of that nature. <laughs> we ain't even made it to the DVDs. We do have some items for sale, some uh, limited edition. <laughs> Jada Fire will be at the lunch in. She will be at the lunch in. That's at 2 o'clock. It's only 12.30 now. We can, we can probably make it to the uh, early 2000s if we walk fast and keep our hands. Just, 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 just try not to touch everything, guys. I mean, if y'all want to see everything, we'll have to walk. I mean, we close it. We don't, we don't close, but I got a new group coming in at 4, and I want to make sure I get y'all at least to fucking in the ass before, <laughs> before they get here. <laughs> Probably gonna have to hand y'all off to my assistants. Man. Shout out to all the ladies that know how to stroke a penis. Yeah. You ever had to repossess your dick? Cause she was handling it too rough. Like, hold up, wait a minute. <laughs> no, what savage you been around? <laughs> Fuck handle my shit all rough. This is not male. <laughs> he opening my shit all up. You know, don't do my shit like that. Old savage ass, bro. The type of bitch who will tear, tear the whole envelope off. I don't fuck with them. Like you said, no scruples, man. <laughs> what you found in the back of your trunk, that's porno. Mm-hmm. Porn, por porn is on the internet. Yeah. But that's porno. I got, that's when you got the hard copy. Mm-hmm. It's porno. That's porno. They don't make porno anymore. You know what? When I actually look through the bag, I think the street value of these right here, I'm thinking, I'm thinking he might have blessed me with about $1,200 in street value for, you know, hard disc pornography. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's like, I, I went in, I tested a few of them just to see what the quality was like. What, bro, we really have forgotten, like, the quality of film we were getting on DVD. It's so crisp, even really? to this day. And these, these came out, I know, I think some of the dates were maybe 03, 04. I saw a few 98s. You feel me? A 98 DVD? <laughs> they had money. What I'm saying, bro. And these were just the ones that were kept in the box Chevy. You My first me? DVD was Like Mike. Mm. That came out like, I don't know why y'all laughing at Like Mike. It's a quality movie, you know what nah, I'm saying? Morris Chestnut, Jason Kidd's in there. First DVD that I bought was Fight Club. Yeah. I got my DVD player when the bitches was expensive. I think it was probably like, 2000, 2001, something like that. I remember when fucking PlayStation 2 first came out, like right in there early. So I had the PlayStation and I had, like I bought the PlayStation off the street. Mm -hmm. Cause I had to have that bitch before, like the, it was chaos for the PS2. Bought that bitch. And then I bought the DVD, I bought the DVD player from the stove. So I had one from the street and one from the stove. But if I would have did it vice versa, I would have bought the PlayStation from the stuff because you can't have too much shit off the street. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you gotta offset the cost. So, my PlayStation Two, remember, it could stand up or it could like lay flat. Yes, sir. I had it standing up, but I didn't have a stand. So you and had then to lean it, it fell. Damn. And then after that, it was never the same. So I had to lay it flat after that. I feel you. Did you ever get a replacement? Nah. Damn, just the same one. Yeah, it's still they were durable now. They still were durable. Work. Hell yeah. This one's not the same. How you feel about this PlayStation 5 hoopla? I'm out the game in game. You out the game in gaming? Yeah, I don't I don't game. Oh. <coughs> oh okay. I, I found that it it uh it 
affects my relationship with some people. Some people are like all about the game. And I don't, I'm not a gamer. Are you speaking about life right now? <laughs> like, I think if I was more of a gamer, I would talk to my friends more. Because mm. they're always talking on the game. Fuck them people, man. But I don't really play the game. Why you? Why do you feel the need to keep them attached to this, to you? I feel like it's a thing that a lot of people are a part of that I'm missing out on. Oh. Well, maybe they chose that over being your friend. Like they did that. Like for them not to include you, if they chose to get off the friendship train and play games, fuck them. They try to include me. I'm not good. One thing I'm not gonna do. Ever in life, I'm never. I'm not gonna look for motherfuckers. You feel me? And sometimes they can be right there in front of you and still not be right there in front of you. You don't never have to look for motherfuckers. Sometimes people choose to cut you off, just like you thought they was your friends, and you ain't know shit about the other friends they had. Prime example: when your best friend introduces you to their best friend. Mmm. They're like, this is my best friend, so and so. Or... And you thought you was their best friend. Whoa. Because best <laughs> friends are supposed to be mutual. Right. But, like, even if you, I, I don't have a best friend, I don't say. I can't say nobody's my best friend. Because I feel like that alienates the rest of your friends. So, how the fuck you gonna have a best friend? You ever had a motherfucker introduce you to their best friend that you ain't even know they had a best friend? And you thought that y'all were, you're like, what the? <laughs> so you mean to tell me this is your best friend? A better friend than me. Why you ain't call that nigga when you needed $60? <laughs> you, you got the nerve to introduce me to your best friend and you owe me. Am I petty? No. Okay. I'm just saying. I'm with you. Hypothetically speaking. J O N, I feel like this tune is petty. That's why I got petty right there. Your music has a lot to do with the shit that we say on this show. People haven't been able to put the connection between the two though yet. Because we haven't confused. It sets the atmosphere. Right. I gotta shout out my 85% again. Because people, it's that time of year where people have started sending us videos of their children <laughs> laying in the bed <laughs> watching 85 South Show until they fall asleep with their little bad ass. I think they, like, little kids love to watch the 85 South Show. Like, kids that's too little to know what the fuck we saying. I think it's just the sound of our voice in certain cadences. They want to know what y'all saying. This one girl sent me this video. The only reason they ain't posted because she sent it, like one of them ones that disappear. Like she, her baby, she, like, she had the laptop sitting in the bed and the baby was sitting up watching it, right? And then DC jumped up and screamed and the fucking baby just flipped up. Man, that shit was so funny. <laughs> but it was one of them disappear ones, you know, just one at a time. Somebody sent me a beautiful love story about how they were trying to get pregnant for five years and then they got frustrated and they stopped and came to one of our shows and got pregnant that same night. Wow. Hell yeah. That shit crazy. I think that baby about two now. I keep up with the 85 babies. Somebody said we gotta start selling onesies. But I, I'm the type of nigga like to take shit too far. Why would we just be selling onesies? We gotta sell them little, them little stupid ass shoes that your baby learn how to walk in, them hard bottom baby shoes. Come on, man. Take over the whole industry. Pacifiers, breast pumps, diaper bags. <laughs> diapers, nigga, what? Diapers and pampers. <laughs> mm, we taking over the game, bro. Five years, man. Yeah. I don't know what the fuck, but we, we, I want to feel, I feel like we need to get in the jet ski industry for some reason. I don't know. Let me know what y'all got going on. Whatever industry you in that you think we need to be a part of, send me some info. 
I need, I'm trying to get in on the low end of every industry. Send me the fucking, you know how people can put you up on the lick, be like, Los, look, they about to put a mall over here. If y'all buy this hot dog stand for 7,000, <coughs> you can get a vendor's license. I'm like, okay, like put me up on the game like that. I want somebody to hit me and be like, nigga, my uncle got a chicken farm. He trying to retire. All he want is 12,000 for it, 56 acres, <laughs> two trucks, and a dog. That'd be dope if yeah. I was in the grocery store and I seen some chicken and had the 85 South on it. Yeah, you'd buy that. I would buy it. Yeah. Just to get in the game first year, everything 85 cents off. Because in the grocery game, that's a lot. You never see coupons for 85% off or 85 cents off. It's usually stop at like the 30, 40 cent range. 50 cent is a big spender. You give a motherfucking 85 cents off, that's when them extreme couponers start fucking with your shit. Mm -hmm. You fuck with that at all? No, what's that? I feel like you are smart enough to be an extreme uh, couponer though. I should, I should mess with the coupons. Mm. I feel like I, I possess the necessary elements. You're good at math. Good at math. You're, you're organized. Organized. Determined. I got a calendar. You got a strong will, too. Because you got to know when they expire. Yeah. That's part of the game. Your determination, like, I've seen you, like, pursue, you know, like, sneaker drops and shit like that. So I know that you got the diligence to be there early enough to make shit happen mm -hmm. in the coupon world. So, and the coupon <laughs> world is it's not competitive for your wants. I wish I knew somebody in the extreme, like my cousin is very successful at extreme coupon. I'm to the point where I could just, I wanna just hire her to make sure all my like soaps and lotions are covered in life. Like I wanna be like, I want her to be my plug if that makes sense. Laundry detergent, fabric softener, shit like that. I got scissors. But do you have 12 pair though? I got two pair. That's not enough. One pair that I keep enough. in the junk drawer and then the other pair for when I lose the one pair. It's not enough. I'm just saying, bro, you about to go to LA where it's like lockdown, on quarantine. Your survival list, do you have rope? Batteries, water, matches. I got rope. Two pairs of scissors. I got friend. batteries. Duct tape. I got a, a thermometer. Like the little, you know, temperature. people come over, I got to hit them with the blinky. You checking temperature at this shit? Mm -hmm. At your door? Mm -hmm. Has anybody's temperature been too high to come over? No. Damn. <clears throat> That's the mulligan in the shit. That defeats the whole purpose. Like, you gotta find one person and deny them entry. Like, whoa, what is this? Did 99 you know you had shit? a fever? Bruh! <laughs> it's three digits. Hey, you might need to drink a Pedialyte, my boy. <laughs> <laughs> Not coming in here with this foolishness mm -mm. now. <laughs> coming in hot. Hey, man. Damn, I smoked this whole joint. I'm gonna be high as Rufus Charles after this. You ever hear people say I'm drunk as Cooter Brown? Mm-mm. Who's Cooter Brown? That's exactly what I was getting at. More people should know who Cooter Brown is, and he needs a, a movie. I would love to see a movie that explained to you perfectly exactly who Cooter Brown was. Drunk as Cooter Brown? That means this nigga is legendary for getting toe up at functions. Everywhere he went, he just got fucked up. Cooter Brown, cut the fool, turned the party out. Living legend. So much to the point where if you went to a party and turned that bitch out and got lit, I mean like really lit, you had they, that's the that's the littest you could be. As Cooter Brown, as the ultimate god of partying in the black community. How much would you have to drink before you start saying your full name? <laughs> <laughs> now that, my boy, is some research you should do and get back with me on. 
Cause I'm robbed through a, through a lot of alcohol. It would be a while before I'm just like, I'm Rob Hayes. <laughs> Rob Hayes in here. <laughs> hey, you never know though. You never know. Have you ever been to that point where you wanted to tell motherfuckers your first and last name? I haven't. You ain't been drunk as cool brown yet. <laughs> Keep drinking, young nigga. Cause I feel like there's some people who are around Kuda Brown, but they didn't know it was Kuda Brown, and then he told them. He told them. I think that's how you know. Like, that's when you lit, when you no longer have to introduce yourself. <laughs> After one or two of these, he was known. Yeah, about that. Oh, hell, here he go. <laughs> Man, well, who, who is buddy? See, you don't even heard of Kuda Brown. <laughs> Who's letting that's Kuda Brown he in here? <laughs> he does that. So yeah, that's how we live. Oh, you have any more shit you want to see on the app? Uh, radio station with all the songs. All the songs y'all made Make like Cat. on a radio that's station. That's Cat Department. Cat got all the songs. He just listening to them personally. <laughs> He's been working on this shit. He got, he, he be like, oh, I got all the songs. I'm like, look. Man, what we gonna do? Man, I'm just listening to him. <laughs> Making sure I like how the violins and shit sound. It's like, right. I'm about to just go make me some new songs, Cat. You be bullshit. See? You see how my staff treat me, man? I, they supposed to be they supposed to be on the other side making shit happen. They just like, man, fuck Los. We asking us for shit. Put the songs out when I fucking feel like it. I'm listening to them. God damn it. But now they piled up. You know. You see what Tupac was going through, man, you know what I mean? I know, man. He had all them songs piled up. Hey, man. Something P- happened to people, you? People don't even know. Joe still ain't answered the phone. That nigga sit right there beside me. I just called him the other day. That nigga refuses to answer. His voicemail is in French. <laughs> you got to hit Joe in advance. He answers for you? Like, if you want to talk to him on Tuesday, you got to start hitting him around Sunday. <laughs> and then by Tuesday, you have a full combo. I don't fuck with him, bro. Last time I called him and he answered, he was like, who is this? I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this would be the perfect time to give the ladies a shout out. You know who I want to shout out? All the ladies with the courage to ask for that dick. Don't be shy. Show them your mama raised a hoe. <laughs> <laughs> Are mothers ever proud of when their daughters a hoe? This is proud. Look at that bitch, just like her mama. <laughs> <laughs> she keeps some. She keeps some nice niggas coming through. <laughs> Ladies, get back with me. Let me know if your mom's proud of the whole shit you be doing <laughs> until she know about it. Coming up next on the uh, next Maury Povic, women that hide dicks from their mom and the men who love them. You ever loved a freak, Rob Hayes? I think so. Yeah. It's a very challenging time in a man's life having to accept that cold reality. It happens, though. It happens. There's nothing wrong with it. You live, and you learn, <laughs> you come back hard, strong, <laughs> sometimes. Sometimes. That shit will kill you quick, though, man. You can get fat fucking with the wrong woman. For real. You must have been here too long. This camera blinking. Oh, I mean, it's working. All right, bet. <laughs> How long we been here, man? I done smoked this long ass joint. I'm about to get 220. You supposed to have been wrapping this shit up, man. That shit was interesting. All right, Rob Hayes, man. We got to get the fuck out of here, dude. Hey, man. I appreciate you having me over. Yeah, man. We done discussed a whole bunch of shit. Octopus and hypothetical shit. You don't even realize, like, the 85 South show helped me out a lot. How? How did this help you, my guy? Man. So, I'm writing on the NFL honors, right? Okay, bet. Steve Harvey's the host 
I did NFL honors. Okay, bet. His son recognized me from when I came through one of the early episodes mm -hmm. of the 85 South show. Show Steve my stand up. He comes back. He's like, man, this guy right here is funny. Said that in front of two different production companies. From that moment, I started writing all kind of stuff. Damn. That's crazy, because they ain't wrote on shit. You mean to tell me you niggas is out here giving Rob Hayes my writing job? You thought I was just gonna let that shit slide? I mean, I was, I was in the building already. You act like we ain't left all 20 of them fucking. Miss Universe, women all over the world. Steve did that shit on purpose. New Year's Eve. It's personal now. Now it's personal. It's personal as fuck now. It's now it's personal, Rob. I knew when that nigga drove off in that fucking Rolls Royce, I would never see him again, bro. He tried to set me up, Rob. He said, don't sign nothing till you see me again. I ain't seen that nigga since. Did his radio show about three times. The nigga didn't even come. He just called in. He was on the phone. I'm like, what's Steve at? Bitch ass nigga, don't say nothing about me. I can hear everything. I was like, <laughs> Yeah, that's crazy. No, I'm just fucking with you. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, man, I knew you was going to be out there doing your motherfucking thing. Yeah, Shout out man. to Steve, man. Good looking out, man. I knew this. I knew this shit way before then. It's goddamn right, Rob Hayes. <laughs> yeah, it's been like ten years. That's all. Yeah, it's been ten. Yeah, ten years, man. I've been knowing you that fucking long. Mm-hmm. Shit. I remember one day I seen you, and you was like, "Who's that white man on your chest?" I had a buttons of different comics. I like I had a Woody Allen button. I was like, "This is Woody Allen." Woody Allen's birthday, it's December 1st. And you were like, it's Richard Pryor's birthday, it's December 1st. Yep. Yep. I remember that day. That day just passed, man. So salute to the king, King Richard Pryor. It was just, his birthday just passed. Yep. You know, you gotta know that type of shit, man. Mm hmm. You like Woody Allen? He's a weird one. You better stop. He's a pedophile! He's a fucking weirdo! I need one of them radio shows where I can be one of the black extremists where I can just <laughs> yell out shit. Be underground in the basement. You are not ready for what's about to happen next. That vaccine, they're vaccinating black people. You remember what happened last time? Let's take some callers. Let's take some callers. Black people, we got to talk about this. We got to talk about this vaccination. I got the good brother who's going to be with me in the next hour. We're going to be discussing vaccinations in the black community. I got my man Robert Hayes, uh, Dr. Robert Hayes of the Higher Institute of Black People. He's going to be speaking up on behalf of the melanated black people who are against vaccination. And we're gonna start homeschooling all of our children and we're gonna be feeding them vegan lunch and dinner and we're gonna be drinking no sodas, just papaya juice and uh, <laughs> lemon water, man. We're gonna get that alkaline up. We got the phone lines about to open up, man. We got my sister gonna come in here and discuss, you know, the benefits of going back natural. You know, we're gonna do a colon cleanse as a group. Make sure you hit the website, sign up for the black people colon cleanse. We're gonna do this. You know, we got a lot of shit we got to get off our chest, man. So we're going to do a colon cleanse, and then we're going to do a group therapy session where we, you know, we just speak about traumatic events about being black, you know, and the, you know, the discomforts about being a black man in America. Robert Hayes, man, how you living, man? Ever since you eliminated pork out of your diet, we've noticed that you've been flourishing as a black man in the white man structural society, man. I know, because your third eye was open because it wasn't so clogged up with that cholesterol. I left that swine alone. Now I can work on this vaccine. Vaccine has to be killed.
kept at negative 30 degrees. Right, because bacteria cannot thrive in a temperature so cold, like a black man in America. Uh-oh, shit tanned up. What's broke? Who broke it? All right, man, let's go, man. Let's get the fuck out of here. Look here. Look here, man. This has been another rendition of the 85 South Show. This is my man, Rob Hayes. Stay black and stay righteous. This has been, was, and still is the 85 South Show. Yeah, bitch. What, my battery dead? Tell that hoe she don't love me, then she ain't shit. Yeah, we got to do some drops for this app. Yeah, I'm about to do some drops. Is this vi is this visual or audio? Uh, both. This is, this is for the Instagram. Hell yeah, yes ma'am. Can you put them titties mind in check, my hand? Check. Cause I'm a yes man. Do you understand if I wanna make love to you, baby?